Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and today I'm here to talk to you about additional sources of capital for small and medium businesses. As I've stated in all my previous presentations, you need to take an innovative approach to your business. You need to view your business as a marketable asset, a source of long-term wealth, a creator of jobs, a source of investment income for yourself and other investors, otherwise known as others who believe. What entrepreneurs and business owners must do with regards to financing is to take the same creative approach they often take when addressing issues in other parts of their business. For example, for a company with minimal funds who needs to launch a marketing and public relations campaign, guerrilla marketing and public relations tactics can vault the company's exposure to and standing among its target, its target audience. Guerrilla marketing tactics requires a highly creative approach and a concentrated effort. Take the same perspective with financing your business and you'll reap similar results. To get creative, focus on what you need the money for, not the actual money. Write down your uses for the funds and the anticipated cost. For example, you need to hire a general manager. That's $100,000 salary. You need a marketing campaign to increase your exposure to target customers. And you say that's, going, that's approximately $50,000. You need deferred maintenance, or rather you need to remodel your office. <laughs> you have deferred maintenance on your office and you need to remodel it. That in your production area is going to cost you 150000 You need to purchase software, and that software is $15,000. Next, begin to brainstorm ways to get what you need and want. Brainstorm, that means just let the ideas flow. Don't put limits on it. Just think of whatever you can. Again, do not focus on the money. Some creative financing options to acquire employees, marketing, software, etc. are as follows. Co-branding. Combine efforts with a company offering a complementary service or product to reach your target market. You can split the cost or one can do the work and the other pay for any external costs involved. For example, you have two employees that are only 50% utilized and they're very good at marketing and graphics and so on. So you wish to craft an advertising campaign, but you don't have the money to pay for the actual ads. You have someone out there who has the money to pay for the ads, but would, but doesn't have the money to also pay for um, an outside company to craft a really nice looking ad. Well, your people in-house can craft the ad and the other company can pay for the ad in the newspaper, the radio, well, I guess you don't have graphics on the radio, but in the newspaper or magazines, and um, there you have it. You have split the cost and you have um, co-branded. Cooperative. Pool funds with other business owners. Co-ops are relatively common in agriculture and energy. I'm a health food buff and there are a number of health food co-ops out there in cities all around the United States. There's um, also worked in energy for Enron and I remember meeting with a number of different energy co-ops around the United States. So yes, co-ops are common in energy and agriculture, but that doesn't mean that they cannot be used elsewhere. Customer deposits and prepays. This is self-explanatory. Use ESOPs. ESOPs are employee stock ownership plans. Sell the company or a portion of the company to your employees. Not only will this option help you raise funds, this option also engenders strong employee loyalty as employees also become owners. And when people are owners, they often think and act a different way. Equity as payment. You can obtain management and other highly skilled personnel at below market rates. 
by offering an ownership stake in a company. And you can do this either outright, come on board and you'll get 5% of the company, or you can say come on board, hit these goals, hit these achievables, you'll get 5% in the next six months and another 5% in a year and a half. Or you can do it via stock options or restricted stock. Economic Development Grants. These grants are available in urban and rural areas, typically through municipalities that have received federal redevelopment funds from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Housing and Urban Development, or other federal agencies. The USDA and HUD are the primary ones, and they typically, or actually they very, very rarely provide funding directly to a business. It is almost always through a city, town, county, or something like that. So it's through a municipality. Licensing. Instead of providing your company's service offering directly to customers, license that offering, that service or product, to a company or other entity that serves your market. Let the licensee expand your market reach and absorb the cost of acquiring new customers. So, for instance, I had a client who had an online tutoring service, and instead of providing that service directly to the school systems or trying to go after the school systems to sell it, he partnered with a textbook provider to get into the school system. So essentially what he did was license his product for, for several years to the textbook company. That way his, uh, the school system got exposure to his, uh, his online tutoring product and parents got it online, got exposure to his online product. Um, so it was an easier sell for him to go after the parents directly because, again, someone else was paying for the exposure of it. And he also still reaped a lot of revenue benefits from that licensing agreement. Self-directed IRAs. Place your money into an IRA that allows you to invest directly in private companies. Now, a lot of brokerage firms say that they have self-directed IRAs, and that means that you can invest in, in any public entity, but you need to get with an entity that would allow you to direct, direct I mean, excuse me, to invest directly in private companies. Equity Trust is one um, I know that allows you to do this, and I'm not sure what others are out there, but again, self-directed IRAs um, through an entity that allows you to invest directly in private companies. Swaps and bartering. This is very near and dear to my heart. I have bartered with the companies that I have owned and I have also bartered as an employee of large corporations such as uh, Enron. And it's a very efficient way of of conserving your cash <laughs> and it is recognized in GAAP generally accepted accounting principles when you book the first side of the swap so let's say you are um, let's use the newspaper as an example so I'm getting $50,000 in revenue from an entity for ads that they're placing in my newspaper. And I'm going through an exchange, so I then recognize six months later some marketing service that I, uh, uh, well, I utilize a marketing service six months hence, and then I recognize that as an expense. But, um, Initially, when I, when I accept the advertising revenue and run the ad, I recognize that as revenue. Um, and then if I don't book something else until a year later on the expense side, then I don't have to recognize it until a year later that it is actually an expense. So anyways, um, you, can see how you, you can see how you can play with that a little in terms of revenue and expense recognition, but that's not the point of this discussion. The point of this discussion is to know that swaps or bartering are a very viable and legitimate way of 
extending your cash resources or conserving your cash resources and getting what you need. If you're a small entity, you can check Craigslist for a direct barter situation. Consignment. Retailers and some wholesalers can acquire inventory free. <laughs> quote unquote. That's free quote unquote. <laughs> Instead of paying in advance for inventory and absorbing the cost, agree to offer another party's item for sale in exchange for a significant percentage of the sale. If you do not sell that item within a specified period, then you return the item to the owner. Again, this is typically used in retail and wholesale, some wholesale, but who's to say it can't be used elsewhere? For additional information and to get started, you can check out my book, Solving the Capital Equation, Financing Solutions for Small Businesses. It's available on Amazon. It's written in the same format that I am speaking now. It's easy to understand in very sim simple terms. There's, I believe, 25 case studies.